Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Get ready for taxes. What's new and what to consider when filing in 2023? Honestly, why is it that whenever the IRS says, get ready for taxes, it makes me think of like a, a cruel nanny getting ready to wash a poor five-year-old child's mouth out with soap because the child committed the grave error of trying to stop the cruel nanny from dressing up her innocent teddy bear in BDSM leather bones, putting them in a cage, and proceeding to whip the beloved teddy bear through the bars, all the while telling the five-year-old child, don't worry, Teddy likes it. And the five-year-old child screaming in horror, which of course led to the soap mouthwashing. S similarly, the IRS is like, don't worry, your checking account likes it when we clean it out a few times a year. It's like a healthy detox for the checking account. Or possibly it's better compared to a nice healthy checking account enema. And it's like, no, no, dang it. You lying, gaslighting sons. But my checking account does not like this abusive treatment. Yeah, maybe if it was performed by like one of those ladies from Hooters or something. No, 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 dang, this is not okay. The IRS responding, that's it. Get ready for us to wash, wash out your mouth with taxes. I'm sick of my editor telling me what to do without any kind of explanation. Okay, I have a plan. I know exactly what- Now stay close. Stay close. Do exactly as I say. Ready? Get her! <laughs> my editor feels like, I know what I'm talking about. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Get her. That was your whole plan. Get her. Or scientific. Okay, let's hear it, Phil. What? Well, what does that mean, Phil? It wasn't a question. I was telling you what. Death. I'll tell you what. Don't talk back to me when I'm telling what. Yeah, but you didn't convey any actual information, Phil. You just said what. I mean, I don't understand the point. You don't even know what that means. Oh, I see, says Phil. I'll tell you why. Okay, Phil. You tell me why. Why? What? No, I already told you what. Now I'm telling you why. Stop talking back when I'm telling you stuff. Stop <gasps> talking. But you did it again, Phil. I mean, there's no actual content to what you're saying. I mean, where is this going? Oh, I'll tell you where. I'm sorry, that wasn't a question. Okay, Phil, don't tell me where, please. Honestly, I think the problem is that the words who, what, when, where, and why are designed to make questions. If you just tell somebody what, why, or where, you're just messing up the whole, like, language system, Phil. You, you're not doing it right. Oh, I'm not messing up the whole language system. You just don't understand how it works. I'll tell you how. This is ridiculous, utterly ridiculous. IR 2022-213, December 6, 2022, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service encouraged taxpayers to take important actions this month to help them file their 2022 federal tax returns. This is the second in a series of reminders to help taxpayers get ready for the upcoming tax filing season. A get ready page, there's a link to that here, outlines steps taxpayers can take now to make tax filing easier in 2023. So obviously we're wrapping up 2022. We're generally filing by April 15th of the following year, 2023. I personally find one of the things that you can do to make the tax filing a little bit easier is to meditate on being okay with loss. Just do some meditation. Pain, life is pain. And so you're just going to lose stuff all the time and you just got to, you know, be okay with that. And then it makes, it makes it a little bit easier. So that's one tip. I'm not sure the IRS focuses on that one. But in any case, here's what's new and some key items for taxpayers to consider before they file next year. Reporting rules change for Form 1099-K. So the IRS is trying to tighten their strangled hold on the whole 1099 reporting. So they've been working on that diligently. Taxpayers should receive Form 1099-K payment card and third-party network transactions. There's a link to that here. By January 31st, 2023, if they receive third-party payments 
in tax year 2022 for goods and services that exceeded $200, a fairly low threshold there. So there's no change to the taxability of income. So note, if you have a, a business, then you might be reporting, say, on a Schedule C, for example, or, 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 or a uh, S corporation or an LLC or something like that. But uh, no matter the, whether you get a 1099 or not, you should be reporting the income because that's the general rule. The 1099 is a form that's going to generally help the IRS to double check that you're reporting your income. And just to recap on how this works, because I think it's just a useful frame of mind to understand the whole system. We have an income tax. That means we're taxed when we make income. And so the IRS has an incentive to try to double check and determine whether or not we made income. It also means that we're not taxed on gross income oftentimes, but oftentimes net income, because it would not make sense to tax somebody on their gross income when they had to spend a whole lot of money in order to generate that income. So on an income tax, it would make sense to have net income be the taxable item, which means that things you pay for to generate the income are usually going to be deductible kind of items, especially if they're business kind of uh, expenses. And so the IRS has leverage on the deductions, the money going outside of things, because every time you pay someone, someone else is getting the income. And they could say, well, if you want the deduction for paying out that money, the person you gave it to, we need to know that they got the money as income so that we can go after them. So you need to rat them out basically. And that's what the 1099 is. It's saying, hey, th this other person, it has income, go after them, don't go after me, I want the deduction. And so that we could see that most clearly in the W-2 form, which clearly does not only have the reporting, hey, go after that guy, don't go after me, here's the W-2, they've got the earnings. They also make the employer withhold the money <laughs> from, uh, from the wages before you know, they even get it. But if you're talking about other kinds of incomes, business income, this is why I think the IRS is a little skeptical of the whole gig economy system, because now you have smaller individual businesses and the IRS is going to try to see, well, how can I collect my income on that? Well, they're going to tighten up the 1099 rules. The platforms on the gig economies have more of a problem because the platforms are not really, are not really employing anybody. They're actually just connecting people together. It's, it's allowing small businesses to flourish due to the connectability. It's like having a new Silk Road or something in the old times. So now you've got people that can connect that couldn't connect before. But the IRS is going to make that connection more difficult as they try to you know, get their taxes by trying to get someone to issue the 1099. And you can see where the hubs would be for them to try to do that. Either the platforms that are connecting people or the payment tools like a PayPal and the intermediary payment tools are going to try to force them to, to issue the 1099s which you know, could, you know, could have some negative impacts economically from the structure of the, of the business, but that is what it is. So all income, including from part-time work, side jobs, or the sale of goods is still taxable. Taxpayers must report all income on their tax return unless it's excluded by law. So anything you earn by definition of the tax law is usually taxable unless they specifically exclude it, right? Whether they receive a form 1099-K a form 1099 NEC, non-employee compensation, or any other information return. So obviously you're still supposed to report any business income. It's just whether or not the IRS has to double check to look over your shoulder to make sure you reported it. So prior to 2022, form 1099K was issued uh, for third-party networks transactions only if the total number of transactions exceeded 200 for the year and the aggregate amount of these transactions exceeded 20,000. So that's a less, a much smaller requirement. And one of the things that this, this is going to do is going to make it so that the platforms have to be fairly established. You have to have a fairly established platform to kind of comply with these kind of laws. So oftentimes these kind of laws actually solidify the single player platforms, meaning monopolization of a platform because big companies actually like these kind of rules to some extent because it drives out their competition that can't their startups and they can't really compete with those rules. So in any case, it, it is what it is. The American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 lowered the reporting threshold for third-party networks that process payments for those doing business. 
So now a single transaction exceeding $600 can require the third party platform to issue a 1099K, money received through third party payments networks from friends and relatives as personal gifts or reimbursements for personal expenses is not taxable. So you, they're gonna have to come up with a system where they can distinguish the payments that you're making through these platforms like a PayPal or something, which are business related or which are just tra money transfers to friends and family. So the IRS cautions people in this category who may be receiving a form 1099 for the first time, especially quote, uh, early filers, end quote, who typically file a tax return during the month of January or early February to be careful and make sure they have all of their key income documents before submitting a tax return. A little extra caution could save people additional time and effort related to filing an amended tax return. And if they have an untaxed income on a form 1099 that isn't reflected on the tax return, they initially file, they, they could mean they need to submit a tax payment with an amended tax return. So if you mess up and you don't include the income, then you might have to amend the return possibly. So if the information is incorrect on the 1099K, taxpayers should contact the payer immediately whose name appears in the upper left corner of the form. So if the, if the platforms mess up and give you a 1099 or something like that, that, that wasn't actual income, that's kind of an a problem because you can't just file the tax return and get it solved on the IRS side of things because the IRS now has that 1099 and thinks that you're cheating them if you do that. So you have to go to the actual platform and try to say, try to fix it there and say, you got to send another 1099. It doesn't matter the one that you got. You're not really the key component of this 1099. Giving it to you is not real. That's what the IRS kind of says they're doing. We're, we're trying to inform you in this. No, they, they're giving it to the IRS. So you got to say, give it another one to the IRS because they think I have income that I don't have and they're not they're going to they're going to hold my refund or whatever if you don't fix it. So the IRS cannot correct it. So some tax credit return uh, to two, 2019 levels. So this means that the affected taxpayer will likely receive a significantly smaller refund compared with the previous tax year. So you'll note that with the whole COVID thing, the IRS expanded payments and whatnot one to deal with the problem i think originally and then two just as political tactics which probably led to inflation and didn't actually help you know anything i don't think after a certain point but uh, i'm not even sure but in any case that's what it is so now they're gonna have to pull back on it some at some point because they obviously went way over the top on it uh t to some degree for a pretty extended period of time and that could be painful when you have to pull back some of these credits that they that they increased so changes include amounts for the child tax credit the ctc earned income tax credit the eitc and child and dependent care credits so those who got three thousand six hundred dollars per dependent in 2021 for the ctc child tax credit will if eligible get two thousand dollars for the 2022 tax year for the eitc eligible taxpayers with no children who received roughly one thousand five hundred dollars in 2021 will now get the $500 in 2022, the child and dependent care credit returns to a maximum of $2,100 in 2022 instead of $8,000 in 2021. Visit credits and deductions for more details. There's a link to that here. No above the line charitable deduction during COVID. Taxpayers could take up to $600 charitable donation tax deduction on their tax returns. So this whole charitable thing is kind of interesting because You'll recall that the prior administration tried to simplify the tax code. And one of the ways you could do that is to try to say, I'm trying to get away from these itemized deductions, which usually impact more well-off people and try to have more people have the standard deduction that would simplify the tax code, you would think. and have. But uh, so that what they did is they increased the standard deduction. And, and then you can imagine what's going to happen. Some people like some of the items on the itemized deductions, like charitable deductions and whatnot. So those things, it seems to me, kind of leak over to other areas. They're like, well, what if we can put some of the charitable deduction on, on above the line or a Schedule One type of deduction and whatnot? And you see those kind of changes. Now, that was a temporary change. A lot of these changes they put under the, the cover of COVID you know, policy. So the, the law, the administrators say, hey, there's an emergency but then they're doing whatever they want to do, which will probably basically like giving out political candy is what they tend to do because under the veil 
of an emergency, you know, in order to gain political points from my skeptical vantage point is how I see it. But in any case, now that they now that's going to bounce back as well. And it's kind of interesting. You can be you can debate that topic in terms of some of those itemized deductions. You know, should they be more or less valuable and whatnot? They they complex the code, but sometimes you, you might say, well, some of them are good or bad. Uh, I I still fall on the side of typically simplifying the code is probably better. <laughs> I, I, any, but in any case, however, in 2022, those who take a standard deduction may not take an above the line deduction for charitable donations. So more people may be eligible for the premium tax credit. For tax year 2022, taxpayers may still qualify for the temporarily expanded eligibility for the premium tax credit. There's a link to that here. Eligibility rules changed to claim a tax credit for clean vehicles. So review the changes under the Inflation Reduction Act 2022 uh, to qualify for the clean vehicle credit. So there's a link to that here. You can check that out. Avoid refund delays and understand refund timing. Many different factors can affect the timing of a refund after the IRS receives a return. Although the IRS issues most refunds in less than 21 days, the IRS cautions taxpayers uh, to rely on receiving a 2022 federal tax refund by a certain date, especially when making major purchases or paying bills. So you don't want to expect a refund, go out and spend a bunch of money because something could happen, right? The IRS might d delay the refund because there might be a problem or something like that. And remember, whenever they say 21 days, that's like an average. You know, they've got to come up with some kind of average there. That means that some people are going to be above and below you know that average i'm not sure how in the world they come up with that number uh, but i do know they have an incentive to try to make it as low as possible to look as good as possible while still trying to explain why they have some returns that take far longer than that and whatnot so i wouldn't just count on that number in other words so some returns may require additional review and may take longer to process if irs systems detect a possible error the return is missing information or there is suspected identity theft or fraud also, the IRS cannot issue a refund for people claiming the EITC, that's the Earned Income Tax Credit, or Additional Child Tax Credit, that's the ACTC, before mid-February. The law requires IRS to hold the entire refund, not just the portion associated with the EITC or ACTC. Why? Most likely because those are the things that lead to the increase in identity theft because they have that in, they have that huge refundable portion. So if someone steals your identity, files just a basic return with no income, they might still try to be able to get these credits if it goes through. And so clearly the IRS is going to try to stop that and they might need a little bit more time to do so. So last quarterly payment for 2022 is due January 17, 2023. Taxpayers may need to consider estimated or additional tax payments due to non-wage income from unemployment, self-employment, annuity income, or even digital assets. So if you had, you know, any any other income, a lot of people's uh, employment situations have been changing for the last couple of years. So if you picked up some gig work, if you have multiple jobs that you that you have worked on, uh, then you might want to do a tax estimate to make sure that you you try to avoid penalties and interest. And again, my, my the goal is not simply to to get a big refund on April fifteenth or even to get any refund at all. The goal is to avoid penalties and interest. I, I talk to people, and some people are like, "Well, I just." I like getting my getting money back at tax. That's fine if you want to give them money and they give it back to you at tax time. Okay, but you're not really getting anything from from that. What you it would be usually better. What you want is peace of mind that your your taxes have been paid, that you can afford to pay the taxes, and that you are reducing the penalties and interest. And so to do that, that's why you want to make sure you pay them on time so you can pay them as little as possible. So the the tax withholding estimator, there's a link to that here. It's a good tool on irs.gov can help wage earners determine if there is a need to consider an additional tax payment to avoid unexpected tax bill when they file. So if you haven't used that or done that this year at all, you probably should because I would think just about everybody could do that considering the tax law has been wildly changing you know, up and down all over the place for the last three years, there's no consistency. So you can't really judge the prior tax return in terms of what you owe in the current 
year, especially with the big changes we just saw above in terms of the, you know, the credits and whatnot. So you probably want to do that and check it out. So gather 2022 tax documents. Taxpayers should develop a record keeping system, electronic or paper that keeps in that keeps important information in one place. This includes year end income documents like Form W-2 from employers, Form 1099 from banks or other payers, Form 1099-K from third party payment networks, Form 1099-NEC for non-employee compensation, Form 1099 miscellaneous for miscellaneous income or Form 1099-INT if you were paid interest, as well as records documenting all digital asset transactions. So it used to be that you would just put these in a, in a folder or something like this, but now it might be that you're getting these digitally because you're, you're going green, man. You're saving the world. I, or because also it's just easier oftentimes, but then you got to make sure you have a secure place to be putting them digitally if you're doing that. So ensuring their tax records are complete before filing helps taxpayers avoid errors that lead to processing delays. So if you don't put something on the tax return, which you got a 1099 for, the IRS doesn't need to like speculate. They have the information. That's why the 1099s, the W-2s exist. Not so you get the information, right? It's so they get the information so that they could, they could tell, you know, it's like for many small business, small the low income individuals or moderate income, the IRS could basically do the taxes themselves at this point, right? Cause they have all the information, <laughs> but, but they could, you know, but there's still s supposed to be a self reporting mechanism. So if, you, so if you try to report something that's like different than the W2 or a 1099, you're probably going to get a letter from it without the IRS having to randomly pick you an audit. If on the other hand, you did something funny that was wrong, that's not reported on a 1099, like a deduction, a business deduction or a schedule a deduction or something like that, then the IRS doesn't automatically pick that up. You might not get a, an automatic response from them as you probably would before you get a refund and, and the other kind of scenario, but you might still get audited if there's a red flag and whatnot on those kind of things. So you want to understand that. So when they have all their documents, taxpayers are in the best already. I just said that. Sign into online account, the IRS online account. There's a link to that here. Let's taxpayers securely access their personal tax information, including tax return transcripts, payment history, certain notices, prior year adjusted gross income and power of attorney information. Filers can log in to uh, verify if their name and address are correct. So more and more, I think the online account for the IRS is going to be more and more important going forward and they should be utilizing it better going forward. So you, so you might have, I mean, we're gonna be required to use it, you would think in a, in a similar fashion as we were basically required to file electronically instead of paper filing, which was like kind of a big issue for a long time. And so, I mean, it is what it is, right? So you might wanna check that out. <laughs> so they should uh, notify IRS if their address has changed. They must notify the Social Security Administration, there's a link to that here, of a legal name change to avoid a delay in processing their tax return. So get uh, banked to speed refunds with direct deposit. The fastest way to get a tax refund is by filing electronically and choosing direct deposit. Direct deposit is faster than waiting for paper check in the mail. It also avoids the possibility that a refund check could get lost, stolen, or returned to the IRS as undeliverable. Don't have a bank account? Learn how to open an account on at an FDIC insured bank. There's a link to that here or through the National Credit Union Locator Tool, link to that here. Uh, veterans should see the Veterans Benefits Banking Program, the VBBP. There's a link to that for access to financial services at participating banks. So clearly the IRS wants to make everything electronic to the point that they can, including the payment if possible. Note that if you are not getting a refund, maybe you, you don't really care about the speed that much. You might just paper file the thing and say, you know, whatever, we're not doing the electronic banking system. Although it's still kind of useful to, uh, to electronically file to make sure that the return was processed. I still like to do that, but you might say, as long as I'm avoiding the penalties and interest, I'll just write you a paper check and send it on in the mail with a paper tax return. And it'll probably take forever for the IRS to process because they're not really up to speed yet on that at this point. So anyways, 
Prepaid debit cards or mobile apps may allow direct deposit of tax refunds. They must have routing and account numbers associated with them that can be entered on a tax return. Taxpayers can check with the mobile app provider or financial institution to confirm which number to use. So we got the bookmark resources. You got the taxpayers can download publication 5348, get ready to file, or publication 5349. Year-round tax planning is for everyone. Everyone! For more information to help them get ready to file, there's links to that here. There's links to all this wonderful information. And we provide a link to, to this page that has these links in the description.